It was a fantastic article with some devastating photos included as well. I really encourage folks to go over to Bloomberg.com to take a look. But yeah, right. give us a sense of what you're seeing if you were to look at what happened in southwest Florida where Hurricane Ian hit. Well, it's really a process that a lot of academics call climate change gentrification. Basically what you have is um, the cost of rebuilding a home in that area is so high that a lot of people just can't afford it, so they're opting to sell. And there's a lot of wealthy people who want to live on the beach, and they're buying up these properties that have been destroyed to build their own mini mansions and big mansions in some cases. And how does the government feel about this, the fact that you do have a lot of wealthy people coming into these towns, buying up property? Are they at all concerned about people being priced out? They don't appear to be. There is some money to help people who uh, who have to sell, and of course, people are getting a market price for their 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 property. But it's really this is really government policy. This is the way the government is dealing with severe weather that's caused by climate change. Um, they basically want homes to be rebuilt to to uh, survive the next storm, and they don't want to have taxpayers pay for that. So uh, they're basically letting the market uh, decide it, so to speak. They don't want taxpayers to have to fund it or subsidize it, but taxpayers are still on the hook in a way, even with wealthy uh, buyers coming in and, and building these fortresses that can withstand potential hurricanes, right? Yeah, that's true. For example, uh, any beach community is going to need uh, to have their beaches replenished, you know, sand dumped on the beach. Roads are going to have to be raised. Uh, and not to mention, you know, if there is a storm, which there probably will be almost everywhere now, uh, you're going to have to pay first responders to go in and take those risks to, to save people. But the structures themselves uh, should withstand the storm, and the government is trying not to foot the bill for that. Well, you talk about future storms, and it feels like it's inevitable that we're going to end up in this situation again, you know, another big storm, another big hurricane coming through. And with that in mind, with these new properties that are being built up, how do insurance companies feel about this? Well, in Florida, they're uh, voting with their feet, basically. I mean, we've had, I'm here, I'm in Miami uh, right now, and in Florida, we've had many, many insurers go broke or just exit the state because the risks are too high. So the state is having, the state of Florida is having to sort of take on that risk and offer insurance, which is subsidized again by taxpayers. So it's, uh, it's a pretty serious situation looking ahead.